When I asked trusted advisors on what I should speak to you about this year, they all answered, hope. A difficult subject for me personally, for I reject all notions of prosperity gospel. I do not believe God necessarily rewards us in this life. I've read too much about those early Christians crucified and fed to the lions. All the apostles of Christ were martyred, save Judas and John, and John was tortured horribly by being dipped in oil. And along with those early Christians, I think of the Holy Family itself, fleeing from Herod, living in poverty in a strange land, and the Blessed Mother, 33 years later, standing at the foot of the cross. The year of 2020, the year of barbaric riots and accepted anarchy, the year of asinine ideas espoused by uneducated activists for things like defunding the police, the year of a pandemic with well over a 99% survival rate that has been used to take power from the people and given to the politicians, the year that governors felt a rush of power in their little bellies, the year they shut down churches as if the Constitution did not exist, the year they shut down small business, knowing full well the inevitable, that big business would swallow up small business and that the average family would then depend on the government for their own survival. This was the year of a stolen election, the year that your constitutional right to vote was thrown out along with your right to work and your right to practice your religion. This year was the year in which the Great Reset was unabashedly proclaimed from all corners of the globe, herding Americans towards a globalist regime. This was the year that a globalist agenda was proclaimed from the Vatican multiple times over. This, my friends, was the year of socialism. Socialism is their end game, and socialism is the enemy of Christianity. God gave Adam dominion over the garden. God emphasized private property in the Ten Commandments by outlawing theft and coveting your neighbor's goods. And history shows that socialistic societies eliminate not just private property, but religious freedom. There's something marvelously divine that intertwines personal property and religious liberty, and socialism is its enemy. Let's make no mistake about it. This year has hurt you. Ideas have consequences particularly stupid ideas. All the markers of a dying society have shot off faster than Elon Musk's rockets. A horrific drop in church attendance, depression, suicide, drug use, child abuse. You see, humans are communal. We must have community. We were made in the image and likeness of the Blessed Trinity, which is a community of three distinct persons in the one nature of God. The only thing bad about the Garden of Eden was that Adam was alone. And the demented leftist politicians all want you to be alone. Why? So you depend on them. Now it comes as no surprise that the left wants to ruin our business, tan books. And when I say the left, what do I mean? I mean big government, big tech, and yes, apostates in the church herself. These traitors to Christ and country, these enemies of your salvation, hate what we publish. They snarl at our content. They cringe at the very sight of our authors, both living and dead. Why? Because they are wicked, diabolically oppressed children of darkness. That's why. They are Herod's men, slaughtering the innocent, hoping to extinguish the light of the world. Who else would put forth the policies they do? If your grandparents were alive today, they would say that they literally fought in the trenches to defeat such perverse ideology, and now we wallow in it like fattened pigs awaiting slaughter. Now, wait a minute. I thought this was a Christmas message of hope. Well, it is, but it is one of true hope, the greatest hope, a hope for which we must be willing to be martyred. But this hope is not a worldly optimism, a feel-good, positive thinking exercise. You know, I can't really think of any martyrs who expected their reward in this life. You see, 2,020 years ago, the Holy Family was on a 90-mile treacherous march 
through the desert, filled with thieves and wild animals, all while the Blessed Virgin was nine months pregnant. Joseph had to shut down his small business in order to comply with an oppressive government mandate. They had to wear face coverings during this 90-mile journey to protect their lungs from the sand and dust pounding against them. And during this journey, the Holy Family probably had no way to keep their Sabbath holy in the temple. It seemed that all was against them. Here was a young, beautiful, and happy family just trying to make an honest living. And the government, accompanied by the powers of darkness, were against them. What kind of heartless, global, imperialist, self-obsessed tyrant curses someone like this? His name was Caesar. But by divine command, we must render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Our work at Tan Books is more important than ever before. We are publishing and distributing in record numbers the most important content ever produced by mankind. Our content is a direct counter-assault on the devil's stratagem. Over one million times a year, our printed products points to the God who became flesh, taking the form of a slave. Tradition holds that when Lucifer, the angel of light, learned that he would have to bow down before flesh and blood, that he led a violent revolt against heaven, for his pride would not allow him to worship a sniffling baby in a manger. Our modern world refuses to do the same. Every time someone says to me, Happy Holidays, I hear a rejection of Jesus Christ. Every time I see a bloodthirsty revolt in the streets, tearing down statues, throwing bricks at the police, defacing a statue of our Lord, all in the name of racial equality, and a media who lies to protect the Marxist ideology of these hate groups, I see that our nation has utterly rejected its Christian roots, jettisoned any notion of authority, and is grossly ignorant of both common sense and revealed truth. Our products speak the unencumbered truth, not overly concerned with political correctness, but also imbued with a charitable tone. But what are we to do now in a Biden presidency, and soon to be a Harris presidency once Biden is deemed incompetent? Folks, I will not soft pedal the truth. These people and their entourage hate what we stand for. The dividing line between us and them will grow more stark. The threats to our right to work will be emboldened. The attack on the right to private property and our sacred religious liberties will be torn down faster than a statue of Robert E. Lee. So, does this sound like a message of hope? Well, here is the hope. You see, Jesus Christ, after his horrific agony in the garden, after the Romans savagely scourged him like a worthless dog, after they forced thorns into his head, mocking his kingship with vile laughter, Jesus Christ, the same little one born in a manger that we celebrate this Christmas season, was shuffled before Pontius Pilate, a minion of Caesar, who asked him, Don't you know I have the power to crucify you or release you? But Jesus said to Pilate something that all of us must remember. Jesus said that the power given to Pilate was given to him from above. You see, all power given to us, whether we deserve it or not, whether Biden-Harris deserves it or not, is given by God the Father. Jesus also told Pilate that his kingdom was not of this world. And we must remember this. Jesus doesn't care so much about politics. He cares about sin. He cares about humility and charity. He cares about those things that will count at our final judgment. So if you want a message of hope, here it is. All the devil has on his side is time, and he's running out of it. He knows that he must grab as many souls as possible before the clock runs out. And any power given to him or his minions on this earth is actually given to them by God the Father just as he allowed the powers of darkness to surround the Holy Family. This little baby in a manger, so helpless, so fragile, so innocent, something I have seen in my own 14 children, reminds me that our hope is not of this world, but in the world to come. And as Catholics, we must not fear the powers of this world any more than the Holy Family did. I encourage you, my dear customers and friends, 
to embrace the timeless truths of the Catholic faith with a fervor that will make demons quake. I remind you that St. Joseph is the terror of demons and that you must entrust your own family to him. I implore you to cast yourself humbly at the feet of the Blessed Virgin, those very same feet that will crush the head of the serpent. This coming year will not be easy for the faithful. We are entering a very dark point in our church and country. It will not be conducive to your constitutional or God-given rights. It will harm you and your family in ways that God allows evil to harm us, just as He in His infinite wisdom allowed the powers of darkness to harm everyone from Job to Mary and Joseph and even His only begotten Son. But such are the times that God rises up saints from the ashes of civilizations and from the very bowels of a corrupt church. It is amidst this darkness that the light of eternal bliss shines down upon the baby in a manger, calling our hearts and minds to our only source of true hope. Thank you, dear customers and friends, for all you do for our nation and for Holy Mother Church. Your King shall reign for all eternity, no matter the mess we find ourselves in on this mortal coil at this particular moment in history. And if this is not a message of hope, the greatest possible hope, then I don't know what is. May God bless you and your family this coming year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you.